and for my grade 12's video course uh, on the link here and just looking at examples of preview screens or preview bumpers. Um, what I'm going to do here now is go to software and I'm going to show you on Illustrator Photoshop. Which one should I show you? What do you guys want first, Photoshop or Illustrator? 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 Okay, let's go Illustrator. Okay, so Illustrator for my new students that never touched Illustrator before, it's funny on a Mac. Okay, so let me just back up here. We're going to go File, New. And this is important right here, just this dialog box. Now, depending on what kind of uh, setup you're going to use, some people have older movies and, and some people have newer movies. So you got to know the difference between SD and HD. So there's some presets on Illustrator, and you'll find this as well in Photoshop. Um, there's one for video and film. And you have some preset drop um, drop downs here. So if you're dealing with a um, this is national television, what's the S stand for again? So, sorry, na uh, National Television Society of Cinematographers digital video, and then there's the widescreen version, and then we can HD. Now, say you were able to download a high definition version of your movie, you would go into the HD. Okay. Now, double check with maybe Premiere or right click on the video file and see what kind of aspect ratio or what size it is. It's 1480, 1920, 720. Just double check the footage that you're uh, editing on Premiere or Final Cut, and then you can create your graphic for that video. Let's assume it's HD, 1920 by 1080. Uh, keep everything else the same. You want to use RGB because that's the color code you're going to use for white screen illumination, and 72 pixels uh, per inch. Okay, you're gonna press OK. Now it's gonna look weird on Illustrator. It's gonna be all these transparent boxes. Okay, I'm just gonna press Tab here for a second, just get rid of my interface. So this is Illustrator, uh, kind of naked with no other uh, toolbars. I'm gonna press Tab again, and all my toolbars show up. I'm gonna just throw this in there, and so you have these images uh, off the internet, and I'm gonna place them. Don't go File Open go file place and we're going to place the image off the internet. So here's one of the uh, JPEGs we downloaded. Okay, and wow, what a size difference. Okay, we're going to blow this up so it fits. And I'm using shortcut commands right now uh, to zoom in and zoom out. Let me just double check here. Okay. I'm going to hold shift and proportionally grow and this should, oh snap, it doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a letterbox style uh, movie editing, so it's not true to the um, 16 by 9, 1920, but that's okay. Um, we'll change that up afterwards. So what I'll do for now is align this to my artboard, center and center, okay? And we're going to use our layers. Okay, now if you can't find layers, guys, window, layers, and it always shows up. I'm going to lock this layer, okay? See what I'm doing there? I locked it. I don't want to touch it. I'm going to add another layer. And in this layer here, um, I'm going to make this green. So I'm going to get a rectangle box, and I'm actually going to make the background. And Illustrator intu intuitively knows to snap to the edges. And you can see that this box is over top because it's on a different layer. Now, what if I want that green? Here's a little cool trick. You click on the, the rectangle that you wanted. And there's an eyedropper tool right here. And you're going to tell the fill color to be this color. Okay. Now, you'll notice this is a vector-based program. And you can see the the old graphics are really pixelated because they're off the internet. And they're just they're not strong, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do here is bring this layer below that other layer. Okay. So you see that there? And I have my, my background layer. I'm going to call this... Uh, BG for background, and I still have my original layer. Now I'm going to create another layer above this. Essentially, guys, I'm going to get rid of this layer when I'm said and done. You're going to recreate it with your own means. Oh, man. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll, we'll continue. All right. Now, not to bore you guys, essentially, you're going to be um, trying to find a font that you can imitate this, okay? 
So if I go and get my text tool, I'll click. Don't click and drag, guys. Just click once. And you would type in, in capitals, are the following. Is it? Does anybody know what font this is? I wouldn't be surprised if it was Helvetica. Is it Arial? It's probably Arial. Oh, it's pretty close. Maybe Arial Bold. Oh, it is Arial Bold. All right, so you match it up and you would type in. And you're probably wondering, sir, why is it black? Well, that's because it's just black right now, and I'm going to make it white afterwards. All right, so imagine you're doing that. You're going to use your text tool to imitate it. And you can play with the tracking and kerning. Now, for my uh, former context students, you know, highlight the text. Hold Alt down with your left hand and use a cursor key, and you can play with the spacing of the lettering. Okay? Um, I would do the line by line, guys. So I'm going to hold Alt, duplicate this. You could just actually get the text tool and just type again, but if you want to save time, hold Alt, duplicate that line of text, and then just double click on it and uh, type in the new. Audiences. Now, obviously, this font is bigger. There's two ways you can do this. You can double click the font, select it, go to your character, and change the font size, or a little bit easier. Getting your selection tool, holding shift, so important to keep it, holding shift till it's proportioned, and progressively grow the font till it's the right size. And this is where I'll play with letter spacing. Did I spell it right, guys? Is an, did I miss an R? <laughs> did you guys know there's a spell check feature, feature, actually? If you go to edit and... Was that? Check spelling? No, did I? <laughs> Pirate. It's funny because a lot of you guys are going to be pirating this stuff. All right. Uh, <laughs> start. Oh, that's how you spell it. Change it. Sweet. So there is a spell check feature. And the fact is, that the word's right there. I should. <laughs> All right. So this is not too bad. It might need some um, adjustments, tracking and kerning. So I might have to hold Alt and just play the spacing a bit on certain words. Okay. Anyways, the guys, the rest of the stuff you can probably figure out yourself. How to do w.filmratings.com. Yeah, this right here, I would create rectangles. And in this case, I'm going to have a rectangle. No fill color. And I'm going to use a white stroke. And I'll click and drag a nice rectangle for the edges here. Okay, and I'll play with a stroke to get the right thickness. Say again. I'm on the wrong layer. Oh shoot, you're already right. Damn, somebody's paying attention. Uh, I'm gonna press Command X to cut that. Go back to this layer and commence, uh, Command F to put it back in place. There it is. And essentially, you just make smaller rectangles. I'll type the, the word restricted and put it inside above this letter. I'll find a nice uh, serif R to imitate that R. You might want to use the internet to find what font that is. And essentially, guys, you're just making rectangles within rectangles to fill in that area. Okay. Now, there's one little icon here. I think it's like a little world, uh, the MPAA logo. You might want to imitate that as well. Anyways, guys, so at the end of it all, uh, what happened to my background? What happened to my background, guys? Oh, I messed it up. Ooh, that's intense. Sorry, guys, let me go back and click on that eyedropper. There you go. Okay, so then essentially, guys, you're creating your own preview screen. You'll save this. 
preview bumper and you can save it as an illustrator file guys um anybody know if final cut pro has a hard time taking illustrator files anyway so we'll, we'll find out uh for those of you using premiere uh it does it takes in the adobe file as is so just save it as a illustrator file now you could have some creative freedom guys there's some right up here it says sexual content, nudity, all that. If you want to be humorous and change that up to your own specifications, you can, okay? And this will last maybe four to five seconds on your trailer. Is that cool? Anyways, guys, good luck. Hopefully that works.